Hi, I'm gonna give a rundown on the adventure vehicle I built for my trip to Caniapisco, which is the most remote location accessible by road in all of North America. And this is what I did to prepare for that trip. The vehicle is a 2007 Toyota FJ Cruiser, and I went with Toyota because I wanted to make sure I had a very reliable vehicle. I bought it about five years ago, and I slowly made a couple of adjustments to its stock form. At the moment, it has some winter tires and steel rims on. I did add a two and a half inch Bilstein shock lift. I did that a couple of years ago because the suspension needed upgrading and I didn't want to go too much higher than that because the most important thing for me, especially for this trip, was reliability. Yes, I can make it look really cool with big lift, big tires, body mount chops, all that stuff. But I didn't want to do that because I wanted to make the least amount of configurations needed if I had to pull in somewhere to get something fixed or to get parts or simply because I just wanted to avoid adding more complexity. I wanted to make sure I kept it at stock form as much as possible. I did remove the steps and I did add rock rails. Uh, some of the locations I've been to do have large rocks that can damage the side body panel. But other than that, the truck itself is essentially in stock form. Now you'll notice I don't have a winch in the front, but I do have a winch that will be mounted, that can be mounted to the hitch. I have access to a winch if needed. What I did do is I did add a secondary battery that is completely isolated from my main battery. Now I know I can get a DC to DC charger in order to charge the secondary battery, which I can run some accessories like a fridge so I can charge a portable electric generator. But I also wanted to make sure that I was able to, number one, use this battery. If I needed to run my winch, I would rather use this battery than use my main battery. Uh, and secondly, this is not a lithium ion battery, again, for the same reason, because I needed the high amperage to run a winch just in case. On top of that, I keep it stored underneath the hood where the temperatures can get hot and high temperatures do not go well with lithium batteries. So this is a conventional lead acid battery. It's a no maintenance battery. And also it can double as a booster for that battery in case my, my car battery does die. Now you notice here, how do I keep it charged? Well, this is connected to this solar panel that is on the roof that's permanently mounted to my roof rack. And so that is a hundred watt solar panel and I have an MPPE controller connected right to the side here that will maintain the charge as needed. So I'll do more of the inside afterwards so that I can, I use that to charge my phone, to run my CB radio. I also have some extra connections on there if needed to charge whatever I need to, to charge. The FJ also is a all wheel drive six speed manual. The automatics don't come with the full time four wheel drive system. This is a system I do prefer. This is the same type of system that is in the full-size Land Cruiser or in the limited edition of the 4Runner. I think that it, it's a little bit better system so that in case I have variable weather conditions on the road, I don't have to actively think about putting my vehicle in four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive. It is constantly in four-wheel drive with a center locking torsion uh, differential plus a locking rear differential. Also has a track, a rooftop tent. Rooftop tent is not a very expensive one. It was about a thousand dollars or so Canadian, maybe a thousand two hundred. Underneath that, I have some knockoff Max tracks. This is not because I think these are better in any way. It's just what I could afford for the trip I was going on. So here's a bit of a better look on the MPPE device that controls the battery charge of my secondary battery in the front. I have it connected to a 12 volt output adapter here, so I can this one here will run my CB radio. Now the reason why I had a CB radio is because when I went up north there are no telephone lines or no cell phone signal so I needed something to be able to communicate with people. Oops sorry about that. I needed a way to communicate with people in case I broke down or if I had a, any sort of issues. This is just a simple one I got on Amazon. I can't remember it came with the solar panel that's 100 watts on the roof and it does its purpose. It shows me how much I'm charging in how much I'm using through these guys here and the temperature, which is kind of handy and helpful. Because this is a 2007, I don't know if newer ones have, I added a Bluetooth 
uh, adapter that goes into the auxiliary port. Uh, that's so that I can hear anything on my phone. I don't, I can have hands-free. All of the audio works through the speaker system and it makes it a lot easier for me to, to use my telephone when needed while driving. Yes, I don't keep it very, very neat and tidy in here, but it is very, very functional. Over here is where I keep my phone. I can just place it on top of here. I can also charge it, of course, with the solar power that is connected to my auxiliary battery. Back into the driver's side, I have a trickle charging solar adapter for my main battery. Now, the reason why I have that is because sometimes it can get very, very cold in the northern latitudes and it could put a strain on my battery. I have this trickle charging my main battery all the time. There's always some sort of some sort of uh, drain on the battery anyway. So if I have it sit for a while, for a week or so, I will always have some sort of charge going on to my main battery. On top of that, because it's an older vehicle, I don't have a GPS internal on the system. I added a Garmin, a simple Garmin uh, GPS. If I am in the northern latitudes and I don't have data, cell phone data, I need some way to be able to navigate or at least get back home. I also have a reversing camera that I added. It's a wireless system because the FJ is kind of difficult to look out the back. It has very large C pillars, but this just putting it in reverse is a very simple install. I just had to connect it to one of my one of my reversing lights for power. I put it to reverse and it automatically turns on and I can see behind me as I'm backing out. I want to have access to a toilet wherever I go, uh, but I don't necessarily want to always have to find the woods or dig a pit. And so I use this shower as a toilet area where I use a bucket, get filled with garbage bags. You can check out this other video to get some more information about that. So that's the adventure vehicle that I made for my trip to Camilla Pisco. It's a long, long trip in a remote area. And I wanted to make sure that I would make it out safely. And it worked very, very well. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below.